Five billionaires, one submersible, one destination. The Titanic wreck site. A daring journey to satisfy their curiosity, 12,467 feet below the surface. Even after a century since the sinking of the Titanic, will human interest in the ship continue to remain insatiable? Over 100 years have passed since the Titanic sank in April 1912. Its remains now rest on the ocean floor, around 400 miles southeast of the Newfoundland coast. In case you didn't know, visiting the wreckage is a thing. Many tourists have paid to have a chance to see the Titanic underwater. But only a few people have actually seen it because not many have the money, connections to experts, or willingness to take the big safety risk required to visit. It took until the year 1985 for a group led by National Geographic explorer-at-large Robert Ballard and French oceanographer Jean-Louis Michel to find the exact location where the Titanic sank. This discovery marked the final resting place of the ship. Soon after, Ballard appeared before the U.S. Congress and appealed for the wreck to be recognized as a maritime memorial. In July of the following year, 1986, Ballard placed a special plaque on the ship, making a heartfelt request for the site to remain undisturbed as a tribute to the over 1,500 individuals who tragically lost their lives there. Unfortunately, contrary to Ballard's wishes, a different situation unfolded. Instead of honoring the memory of those lost, fierce competition arose regarding who would have the right to recover valuable artifacts from the ship. This competition intensified as various individuals and organizations sought permission to salvage items from the wreckage. In 1987, the Titanic Ventures Limited Partnership, or TVLP, and l'Institut Français de Recherche pour l'Exploitation de la Mer took on the first official effort to salvage items from the Titanic. They managed to collect and preserve approximately 1,800 objects. Later in 1992, a federal court made a decision stating that TVLP was the first and only authorized entity permitted to salvage items from the Titanic. However, over the following decades, the company continued to pursue more salvage opportunities. Now operating under the name RMS Titanic Incorporated, the company has conducted a total of eight expeditions to the Titanic wreck. During these expeditions, they retrieved numerous artifacts from the site. Some of these items were later sold through auctions, amounting to over 5,000 objects. Among the noteworthy pieces auctioned off were jewelry and even a section of the ship's grand staircase. Since then, many people have visited the Titanic wreck, including researchers, salvagers, and even famous filmmakers like James Cameron, who directed the popular 1997 movie Titanic. They have made numerous journeys to the site, eager to explore and learn more about the historic shipwreck. In 1998, a British company called Deep Ocean Expeditions became one of the first to offer tickets to the general public, allowing them to witness the remains of the Titanic up close. The price for these tickets was quite high, set at $32,500 per person. Fast forward to 2012 and Rob McCollum, the leader of these expeditions, revealed that his company was planning a final series of tours to the wreck. By that time, they had already made an impressive 197 trips down to the Titanic. The last expeditions in 2012 lasted for 12 days each and accommodated 20 passengers on board. However, the cost for each passenger was even higher than before, amounting to $59,000 per person. From 2002 on, a travel company called Bluefish, based in Los Angeles, offered dives to explore the Titanic wreckage. These dives were limited to only eight people per trip and continued for the following four years. In 2012, Bluefish resumed accepting bookings for Titanic dives. The tickets for these dives were priced at $59,680 per person. Another company, Blue Marble, based in London, sold tickets in 2019 at a much higher price of $105,129 per person. They claimed that this amount reflected the adjusted value of a first-class ticket during the time the Titanic sank. 
Blue Marble partnered with Ocean Gate Expeditions, the same company whose vessel went missing recently, to organize these tours. Ocean Gate Expeditions successfully carried out exploration trips to the Titanic wreck in both 2021 and 2022. They have 18 more dives scheduled throughout 2023. Ocean Gate Expeditions is a company that uses manned submarines to explore the depths of the ocean. They have previously offered special voyages in one of their submarines, allowing tourists to descend to the underwater site where the RMS Titanic rests. The cost of a seat on these voyages was set at a hefty $250,000. The interior of the submarine was designed to be compact, resembling the space inside a minivan. To navigate the submarine, there was a simple control system consisting of only one button and a video game controller. Since there is no GPS available underwater, the submarine relies on communication from the surface ship. The surface ship sends text messages to guide the submarine to the exact location of the Titanic wreck. Ocean Gate's deep sea vessel, called the Titan, has gained recognition for being the only submersible worldwide that can accommodate five individuals and reach the extreme depth where the Titanic lies, 12,467 feet beneath the surface of the ocean. The usual configuration of the vessel includes a pilot, three paying guests, and an additional person known as a content expert, as described by the company. Impressively, it also provides about 96 hours of life support to sustain a crew of five individuals during their exploration missions. Recently, OceanGate made announcements on its website and social media platforms sharing that their expedition to the Titanic shipwreck was already in progress. They described this immersive seven-night journey as an extraordinary opportunity to escape the ordinary and embark on a remarkable discovery. Moreover, the company's website revealed that aside from the ongoing expedition, they had scheduled two more expeditions for the following summer. Due to the limited oxygen capacity of the submarine, it can only remain fully submerged for a portion of the week-long voyage. A group of five individuals embarked on this exploration. Together, they prepared themselves for the journey with the anticipation of descending deep into the ocean, 350 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, to explore the wreckage of the Titanic ship. First, there was Stockton Rush, a visionary British entrepreneur. He embarked on an extraordinary journey when he established OceanGate in 2009. Taking the helm as the organization's CEO, Rush assumed the crucial responsibility of overseeing the development of state-of-the-art submersibles, capable of diving to astonishing depths of up to 20,000 feet beneath the ocean's surface. Stockton's fascination with aviation ignited during his formative years and led to a remarkable accomplishment in 1981. At the tender age of 19, he etched his name in history by becoming the youngest jet transport-rated pilot in the world. With his diverse range of experiences in aviation, engineering, and business, Stockton stood as a trailblazer at the helm of OceanGate's mission. Paul-Henri Narjolet, also known as Mr. Titanic, was an expert on the Titanic. He served in the French Navy for 22 years and eventually became a commander. After retiring from the Navy in 1986, he worked at the French Institute for Research and Exploitation of the Sea, where he supervised two deep-sea submersibles. In 1987, he led the first dive to recover items from the Titanic wreckage. He held positions as the Director of Underwater Research for RMS Titanic Incorporated, a company focused on preserving Titanic's history and the EM Group, a company providing exhibitions and entertainment. Throughout his career, Paul completed 37 dives to the Titanic shipwreck in a submersible. He oversaw the retrieval of 5,000 artifacts from the wreck, including a 20-ton section of the hull. Hamish Harding, in particular, was an experienced adventure tourist who had embarked on various extraordinary journeys. He even traveled to space last year aboard a Blue Origin rocket. Two years ago, he achieved another remarkable feat by reaching the deepest part of the ocean, the floor of the Mariana Trench, which lies 35,876 feet below the surface. 
Accompanied by U.S. explorer Victor Vescovo, they used a submersible worth $48 million for this expedition. Their incredible achievement earned them both the Guinness World Record for the longest distance traveled by a crewed vessel in the deepest part of the ocean. Shazana Dawood held a significant role as the vice chairman of Engro, a prominent Pakistani energy investment company. He also held a position of influence with Dawood Hercules Corporation, an investment and holdings firm. With his expertise in mergers and acquisitions, Shazada was well-versed in navigating the business landscape across various industries, including textiles, fertilizers, foods, and energy. Shazada dedicated his time and efforts to serving on the boards of esteemed organizations. One notable institution was the SETI Institute, a nonprofit organization supported by NASA focused on conducting research and exploration related to extraterrestrial life. Additionally, Shazana lent his support to Prince's Trust International, a charity established by then Prince Charles that aims to empower and provide opportunities for young individuals to achieve their potential. Suleiman Daoud, the 19-year-old son of Shazada, was an aspiring college student during the expedition, recently completing his first year as a business major at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland. Suleiman displayed a keen interest in pursuing his education and developing a foundation in the field of business. These crew members paid up to $250,000 each for the opportunity to journey to the Titanic wreckage. They also signed liability waivers, accepting any potential risks associated with the dives. On Saturday, June 18th, the support ship for the Titan, called the Polar Prince, arrived in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. When the Polar Prince docked, the flags on the ship were lowered halfway as a sign of respect. Another boat came to the harbor, towing the launch platform for the Titan. On board the ship were members of the Titan support team and some relatives of the crew. The Titan submersible was getting ready for an expedition with five passengers on board. Their mission was to explore the sunken Titanic, which is located 12,467 feet under the sea. Before the exploration, Suleiman felt uneasy about joining his father Shazada on the trip. He had a strange feeling and didn't think it was a good idea. He wasn't comfortable with the idea and didn't want to do it. But since it was Father's Day, he decided to go along to bond with his father. At 6 a.m., the Titan was launched from a special ship called an icebreaker. Oceangate had hired this ship, which used to belong to the Canadian Coast Guard. The icebreaker had transported numerous people and the Titan submersible to the location of the sunken Titanic in the North Atlantic. The vessel carrying the Titan had enough oxygen to support the crew for 96 hours. The Titan submersible went underwater, and after an hour and 45 minutes, it lost all communication. Normally, it takes around two hours for the Titan to reach the Titanic wreckage, but this time, it was scheduled to resurface at 3 p.m., but didn't come back up as planned. The submersible got lost in an area about 900 miles east of Cape Cod in the North Atlantic. The water there is similar to the depth of the Titanic wreck, the Polar Prince, the ship supporting the Titan, couldn't communicate with the Titan anymore and realized it was overdue. They decided to conduct an initial search, but couldn't find the submersible. They requested help from authorities, who were sent to carry out a search and rescue mission. As the news rapidly spread around the world, panic erupted, especially since the crew had a limited oxygen supply that would last only for 96 hours. This made the rescue mission a race against time to reach the submerged vessel. On Sunday night, the Coast Guard notified mariners about the missing submarine, describing it as a 21-foot submarine with a white hull. They shared its last known position, highlighting the urgency of the situation. The alert message read, Vessels in vicinity requested to keep a sharp lookout, assist if possible. On Sunday, June 18th, the U.S. Coast Guard and deep-sea experts from Canada, the U.K., France, and private organizations joined forces to search for the Titan submersible. This sparked an urgent international rescue operation. Rescuers deployed ships, planes, and various equipment to the location where the submersible had disappeared. On Wednesday, 
the U.S. Navy reported detecting sounds underwater that indicated an implosion. The search area covered a vast area spanning thousands of miles, which is twice the size of Connecticut. The waters in this area are approximately two and a half miles deep. Early Thursday morning, a Canadian vessel called the Horizon Arctic deployed a remotely operated underwater vehicle, or ROV, that reached the ocean floor. The ROV searches focused on the region where the sounds were heard. Eventually, the ROV located what the Coast Guard initially described as a debris field on the sea floor. This field included identifiable parts of the submersible, and it was located about 1,600 feet away from the Titanic's wreck. The rescue teams made a significant discovery when they found five major pieces of debris that confirmed they were the remains of the Titan. One of the first pieces they identified was the nose cone, which was located outside of the pressure hull. This was followed by the discovery of a large debris field. Within this field, they found the front end bell of the pressure hull. Finding this part was their initial indication that a catastrophic event had taken place. Shortly after, they located a second smaller debris field. The debris found within this field constituted the entirety of the pressure vessel. The presence of this debris field aligns with the occurrence of a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. Unfortunately, following the discovery of the debris, all five passengers were declared deceased. The families of the victims were promptly informed about this heartbreaking news. Experts believe that the bodies of the deceased will not be able to be recovered. The search and rescue operations were concluded on Thursday after finding the submersible debris. Nevertheless, deep-sea robots continued to explore the ocean floor in hopes of uncovering further information about the incident that occurred in the depths of the North Atlantic. The Transportation Safety Board of Canada will initiate an investigation specifically focusing on the support vessel called the Polar Prince. Even the Polar Prince, which served as the mothership to the Titan, will be investigated. After many days of searching, on June 22, the U.S. Navy confirmed that the Titan submarine was lost due to a collapse of its hull, caused by immense water pressure. The water pressure 13,000 feet down at the site of the Titanic wreck is roughly 400 atmospheres, about the same as having 35 elephants on your shoulders. The hull of the Titan was designed to withstand such pressure, so experts are now investigating what went wrong. They will analyze the debris found to gather more information. When contact was lost, the Titan was estimated to be 11,482 feet below the surface of the sea. At that depth, the amount of water above the sub would have weighed as much as the Eiffel Tower, which is tens of thousands of tons. If there was a break in the structure, the pressure outside the hull would have been much greater than inside causing the vessel to be squeezed or compressed. When a submarine's hull collapses, it rapidly moves inward at an astonishing speed of about 1,500 miles per hour. To put it in perspective, that's equivalent to about 2,200 feet per second. The entire collapse process happens incredibly quickly, taking only about one millisecond, which is one thousandth of a second. In comparison, the human brain instinctively responds to a stimulus in around 25 milliseconds, while the time it takes for a rational response, from sensing to acting, is believed to be around 150 milliseconds at best. Inside a submarine, the air contains a relatively high concentration of hydrocarbon vapors. When the hull collapses, the air auto-ignites, resulting in an explosion following the rapid implosion. Due to the intensity of the implosion and the subsequent fire, human bodies are instantly incinerated, turning into ash and dust. The tragic incident involving the Titan submersible represents the first recorded loss of life in a civilian deep-sea exploration in over six decades. It was discovered that the Titan was operating without proper registration as a U.S. vessel and lacked compliance with international safety regulations. Furthermore, the submersible did not receive classification from industry organizations responsible for establishing design and construction standards. There have been criticisms regarding the delay in reporting the craft missing. 
It was reported after an hour and 30 minutes into the trip that communication ceased between the Titan submersible and its mothership. However, previous passengers who had participated in similar expeditions have mentioned that the vessel would often experience communication disruptions lasting two to three hours before reconnecting. Authorities from the U.S. and Canada have initiated an investigation into the cause of the tragic implosion of the Titan submersible. Although a formal inquiry has not yet been launched, maritime agencies are still engaged in the search operation in the area where the vessel was destroyed. Legal experts mentioned by Reuters highlight that waivers signed by the deceased may not always provide absolute protection. In cases of gross negligence or undisclosed hazards, judges may reject such waivers. A CBS reporter who participated in a trip with Ocean Gate Expeditions in July 2022 mentioned signing a waiver that explicitly mentioned the possibility of death multiple times on the first page alone. Whether Ocean Gate will face charges or not is uncertain at this time and will be determined in due course. In 2018, a former employee named David Lockridge who worked as a submersible pilot for Ocean Gate Expeditions, raised concerns about the safety of the sub used for the Titanic tour. David took legal action against the company by filing a lawsuit. The situation became complex as Ocean Gate fired Lockridge and subsequently sued him for allegedly disclosing confidential information in a whistleblower complaint filed with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. David, in his court filing, expressed worry about the capabilities of the Titan submarine. He pointed out that the company intended to take passengers to a depth of 13,123 feet, even though no submersible with a similar carbon fiber hull had reached such depths before. According to his claim, he discovered that the vessel was constructed to withstand a certified pressure of only 4,265 feet. This discrepancy raised concerns regarding the sub's ability to ensure passenger safety during dives to the intended depth of 13,123 feet. David Lockridge was not the only person who had doubts about the safety of Ocean Gate's submersible. In the same year that he filed his complaint, other leaders in the industry also approached Ocean Gate with their concerns. One of these individuals was William Conant, the president and CEO of Hydrospace Group. In a letter written in 2018, which was initially published by the New York Times, William outlined his worries about the submersible. He highlighted that the submersible was considered experimental and lacked certification, which could potentially lead to severe and catastrophic issues. William informed CBS News that while he did not send the letter directly to OceanGate, it somehow got leaked to the company. As a result, the letter prompted OceanGate to make adjustments and clarify certain details publicly, emphasizing that the submersible had not yet received its certification. The concerns expressed by David and William, as well as others in the industry, highlight the importance of addressing safety issues and ensuring proper certification for the submersible before carrying out any further expeditions. The untimely demise of these men has evoked mourning from people all around the world. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting story.